Right here. Well, it's getting uh, quite close to Christmas, only a couple of days now, and uh, I actually have some time to think. That's really unusual for me. So uh, I've come back out to the shed. I considered maybe cleaning this workspace up, but, you know, creativity and, you know what, I'd rather do creative stuff. So, what am I doing? Well, I'm going to clean up a few projects today, and I thought I'd uh, just give you a look at uh, where some of these things ended up. Uh, now, what was left? Um, my underwater camera video. In that video, I uh, used some excess resin, and I cast into a silicon chocolate mold, which, if you're ever doing polyester resin, this is really magic. These molds just were the answer to my dreams. And uh, I think I got it for about four bucks. This is still a little sticky because the ratio was not ideal. You can see from here it sticks pretty well. Um, a little bit of heat will fix that up. It'll solidify right up. And I'll probably polish it. But it gives a very, very good finish straight out of the mold, which is quite exciting. All right, so what are we really doing here? Well, aside from getting sticky fingers when I touch everything, um, I'm going to work on a new little shipment I got from China. Let's have a look here. I got a whole bunch of these fresh. These are DigiSpark modules, or at least Chinese clones of them. The difference between paying a buck fifty for one of these plus GST, because of, you know, stupid government thinks that eight cents of GST is going to help, um, and between paying a buck fifty each for these and maybe ten dollars for the official version, is that the pin six here is actually a reset pin. Really annoying. It means you can't use that unless you mess with a bootloader. Now, bootloader, you say, well, these actually have an AT Mega chip on here. They're actually an Arduino. And that big chip there is actually a 5 volt regulator. Very, very handy. And they give you some little header pins as well. Now, what I've been doing with these things is I've been programming them, programming them as a USB rubber ducky. If you're unfamiliar with the term, that is basically a uh, simulated keyboard. So when you plug them in, they instantly switch into keyboard mode with a little module you can have them load and start simulating key presses. Now you can do some nefarious things with them. However, what I'm planning on doing is setting them up so that they uh, hold a very long randomly generated password and randomly generated some other way like maybe uh, the radioactive decay of some thorium, potentially some thoriated tungsten welding electrodes, uh, and count the number of particles thrown off over time. That would create a nice random generator that's not predictable like most of them. And in any case, regardless of how I come up with that really long password, this would be a great way. I can plug it in, have it set to delay a few seconds, and then output a string of characters. I'd make a nice little password. Problem is, in this current form, they're not exactly tamper-proof. Um, you can trip an internal fuse to make them non-writable and non-readable, uh, but that would be kind of a moot point because it's already going to output a string of characters anyway. The end process, I want to make them waterproof. So, as you've been watching while I've been ranting here, I've made a mould out of core flute. Um, some time ago, uh, my parents redid their whole undercover area and used core flute as a ceiling to hold the insulation in, I got all the offcuts. So I thought that, given that I've watched Adam Savage's tested videos where he uses core flute as a resin mold, I thought I might try it. However, a lesson learnt that might go wrong here was that uh, in a previous video when I'm making an underwater camera, I used this spool and piece of wood to hold it, and the fact the wood stuck to the bottom might give you a hint as to what went wrong. Well, I was using acrylic wine glass molds and uh, it melted right through them albeit because it was fiberglass resin but uh, I did find in practice that the uh, the clear casting and embedding resin also did that just to a much smaller degree but I found it also melted the bottom of the spindle as well <laughs> and then never really set properly so that's fun so, I think it's probably time I stopped rambling so much, and that's rantling, combination of ranting and rambling. Um, I made that up right there. About time I stopped doing that, and actually mix up some resin and see where we go from there. So, another lesson learnt from last time is that uh, 
the laser cut phone case I'm using is very absorbent to resin and as I covered my phone case in resin last time accidentally I'm taking a different angle so that my right-handed idiot self doesn't pour resin all over the camera this time so this has eight drops per 30 mil and it's a cool night I might need a little bit more but this might be the smallest amount I've ever poured for this so I think that's probably plenty and um, I'm learning fairly quickly with this stuff that it's a bit counterintuitive with the catalyst because it's an exothermic reaction you need a little bit less a little bit more for a small amount and a little bit less for a larger amount so or a lot less in the case of pouring a whole 500 mil container so I'm going to anticipate 10 drops one two three four five six seven eight nine ten right now if you guys are not already sick of seeing me mix resin here's a bit more video of me mixing resin maybe if I get creative in the editing process I might be able to uh, put some fancy music in here Although I've been using smart sound to procedurally generate music I do actually have about a hundred original compositions to my name some of which are listed with APRA. Lots of bubbles in here, but I don't think I'm really going to care. This this stuff seems to be pretty resilient for air bubbles. I think it shrinks a bit, so most of them disappear. So let's see how we go here. I'm going to pour it all in here. I'm just going to cast the whole thing in a single block. I think that's about it. I don't really want to do too much, but I want to allow myself a little bit of room to sand. Give myself just a little bit more on the top. Alright, that'll be interesting. And, um, don't really know what to do with the rest of this. Um, I grossly overestimated my mold. Well, I think I'm going to leave this in the cup as a checksum, for lack of a better term. I can check how it works. I'll press the lid down, and we'll see what this is like. In like so yeah. quick update looks like I need to work on my hot glue skills and typically it's dropped just below level for the unit but it is fairly solid under there so I think if I add new resin and put it out in the Sun the heat UV and extra resin might do the job for me and I'll use quite a bit more catalyst this time all right so a little bit of time out in the Sun and if I can get out of my own shadow here, you'll probably see there's quite a bit of nice clear resin in there. It's set nice and solid. I also took the time to fill up some shells that I'm planning on uh, casting into resin. And this particular one was dug up out of a uh, World War II target training range uh, for Beaufort's gun turrets. That's a different story. Let's see if we can get this out of the mold. All right, so here it is out of the mold which is probably stuck to the bench, but that's fine. This is um, something I didn't quite anticipate here. Um, a little bit of it seeped out along the contact. So I've done a little bit of scraping. It looks like I might get away with having clear contacts. Uh, the back, on the other hand, seems to be relatively okay. But it's in a block with enough room for me to, uh, to work with, probably a bit more than I kind of expected. But it does make this um, a, bit, a little bit easier to hold, and it's nice embedded in resin nobody's going to tamper with that and we can see the light flashing through it which I can customize that will be handy so I think now it's time for me to do a little bit of sanding and uh, get this cleaned up
right ho, so after that little high speed montage, this is our finished product. Well, it's not quite the end shape that I was hoping for, but uh, I think this will prove the concept at least. This uh, clear casting resin, I really like it. It's come out much, much better with a bit of time in the sun and a little bit extra heat, which, uh, as I believe, it's an exothermic catalyst. I think that's part of why the heat makes a difference. In any case, there's a little bit of buffing compound left on here. I'll clean that up in a minute. The bit I'm most worried about is these contacts. I gave them a sand up with 1500 grit till they started to shine. I think I've got most of the resin off them. I will be changing my mould design to accommodate for that later. But let's go over to my rather messy desk with peppermints and coke cans and all the other stuff. And we'll plug it into my USB hub, which it looks like my sizing was okay. Let's see if we turn this on. Well, okay, so we know that the power contacts are making contact. So let's go over here, adjust my camera a little bit. Next step here, rather than using some sort of fancy screen capture software, which I do have somewhere, I'm just going to very quickly load up the Arduino programming software. So I already have a code written up for it, which is loaded up straight away. So I'm going to load a bunch of random characters in here that we'll use for a password and I better save where I'm at. Um, I'm going to call it uh, resin test. Okay, now this is just a really basic code here. I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but basically it loads the digikeyboard.h modules and then uh, says send keyboard strokes after a delay of 5000 milliseconds, which gives it time to install drivers on a foreign computer and a little bit of time for you to figure out what you're doing. Then outputs this big long string of characters, which I will be changing in the programming later. So let's see how we go. Let's compile this and let's get this to where are we? We are going to go sketch and upload. So it will prep to sketch. I have my finger off camera on the switch for the USB hub. Okay, it looks like it's compiled successfully. And it's going to go, let's go and turn this on. Good time to tell me about updates. And it looks like it's uploaded. And now it's setting up the device. All right, and it's outputting a string of characters. So let's repeat this to undo what it just did there. Let's go to a text document here. Let's create a new one. All right, so let's just open this up. And we will go, let's plug it in. And after about five seconds, we should see a string of characters. I should tell you I'm going to change after I record this video. It's not something I'm going to use as a password. There we go. There's our string of characters. So let's try something that's a bit closer to a real world test. I'm going to take this little unit and what I've done here, I found the first page that when I googled for login, this is the first one that came up. Selected the password field. So I'm going to plug this in and in a few seconds we should see it auto-fill the password. Apologies for my apprentice in the background there. Five seconds. Oh, this could be because it's a USB 3 lead. Interesting. Let's try a different lead and start again. So I'm going to try a USB 2 port on the front of the computer here. Let's plug into you. And we should see after five seconds it should anonymously or without anybody being able to see what you type on the keyboard, enter a password. I think that's been more than five seconds. I know it's actually setting up the device on a different port. Oh, and here we go. It's entered our password in. All right, I'm gonna call that a success. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for some more stuff. Thank <laughs> you.